good morning last lecture was analyzing and designing jobs but since we could not complete that topic so today we continue with the topic okay do you have any questions from what we covered in the last lecture do you remember what was the basic topics covered tell me job specification yes what else job analysis and job evaluation and job description right today we will see what is the process of job analysis now first is strategic choices first extent of employee involvement that you want in analyzing of jobs do you want all the employees who are doing the jobs to be involved in the process or you only want the management team to be involved in the process or you want some specialist engineers like the industrial engineer only to only one person doing the analyzing so this is got called strategic choices each has got its advantages and disadvantages right for instance if you only have the industrial engineer who does it one single person what is the benefit and what is the disadvantage of that what is the benefit maybe it can do it faster maybe he has got the expert knowledge so he can do it better what is the possible disadvantage yeah maybe he doesn't know the whole picture the totality he only knows a particular job but he may not know where that job which is being analyzed you know what is it useful for what kind of you know uh, differences will be required depending on the market conditions and so on another possible disadvantage is implementability right if you involve people who are doing the jobs right from the beginning then there is a better chance that when you implement that job right at that time there will be acceptance otherwise is it not so you may not have better acceptance if some specialist has done the job and you come and tell the employees that this is what we have analyzed this is your job for instance your job is your job is you are not supposed to read drawings you may say why we have to read drawings i am doing this job and so on so the chances of implementing it better and quicker is more if you have number of people involved so that's why we call it strategic choices extent of employee involvement then level of details of analysis now this also is a strategic choice do you do a job analysis which is first cut so to say that is generally to differentiate between one job and the next job or do you do it in the nth degree of detail that will depend on what is the management policy decision if there are certain kinds of jobs you know like tool room where the quality of making the die or the tool is very very important because that one die is going to make millions of parts later on then you may like to do the job analysis at the nth detail but not so for other parts where you have high tolerances say there are parts which are going into a sub assembly or a main assembly the tolerances are high all right so in that case the job need not be analyzed to that detail so who decides it the management that's why we call it strategic choices then the timing and frequency of the analysis all right how often do you analyze all right and how much you analyze and past oriented versus future oriented analysis so the analysis of jobs which you have done in the past all right and therefore you try and project what are the likely jobs which will come into the future or whether you look at the future only and say past is past our business profile is changing we are going to have new kinds of jobs coming in so let us see something which is much more into the future so this is another strategic choice okay so after having made the strategic choice you have the gathering information which is what type of data is to be collected then what methods are to be employed for the data collection all right now say you are setting up a plant in a backward area all right 
and you are trying to analyze the job which will be required to be done for the product you will manufacture there. Okay. Then you have to decide on what are the methods to be employed to collect data. Are you going to send out a questionnaire or will you make personal visits right, to existing employers? What is the cost in each case? What is the time that will be taken? So, this has to be decided. Who should collect the data? Should it be collected by the industrial engineer or by someone from the HR department okay, or someone from the production department who are already producing similar jobs? This also has to be decided. Then after the information gathering, what is the next step? Information processing. So, the data collected are useful for preparing job description as well as job specification. Okay. Sometimes especially for senior positions, the job description and the job specifications are combined into one. Now, do you remember the difference? What is job description and what is job specification? Yes. What is the difference? What is job description? that is the job itself, it focuses on the job. Is that right? What is the specification? Have you got your last lecture notes? But that is what you said just now. Is it job oriented? You want to check your notes? We even said last class, what is the difference? You know what is the difference? Job specification is relating to the job, then job description, job description is to the person. Is that correct? Anyone got notes from last time? Huh? Is that correct? Read it out what you have written. job title, location, job summary, that is job description. And what is job specification? What did you say? What read out what is job specification? Job specification it will give you the detailed requirement for a job. Detailed? For that means, it is focusing on whom? The person, is it not? What were the kinds of thing we said? Age, experience, qualification, is it not? And the job description is, what did we say? The material used is in the component, what is the machines, what is the tool. So, you must be very clear about this. What is the description and what is the specification? All right? So, data collected are useful for preparing job description as well as job specification. Because aren't they interrelated? If someone has to do a job, all right, which requires a manual dexterity. Are you going to process, are you going to specify that engineer should be employed? No. You will probably say ITI people who have been trained by working with their hand, because they are both interrelated. Okay. Sometimes, especially for senior positions, the job description and job specifications are combined into one. Do you understand why? Can you give me an example? Say general manager, what is his job description? Are there any materials, tools and so on? What, what does he do? And what should be his job specification in order for him to do that job successfully and well? What is your concept? General manager's job description. You have to think back on what is a manager. We did that in the first lecture. Manager's roles, all right. We also did manager's skills. We did roles and functions. Do you think the roles and the functions of a manager all right, would be more pertinent to his job description, if you have to write a job description? And do you think that manager skills would be more pertinent all right, to his job specification right? or no? Are you with me or you have deserted me, you are not with me? Are we on the same wavelength? All right. So, for a general manager, can we not combine job description with job specification? If so, how? Can you tell me? 
wanted general manager for refrigerator factory all right then the job involves that is you are describing the job how would it go so many advertisements you have seen now you'll be adver after you mtech you'll be huh applying for jobs also you'll see advertisements job involves what what is the manager's role what is the general manager's role is it to plan planning is a role what else communicating yes coordinating leadership now you see you know it but you are diffident to say it is it or password has not been fed in once you feed in the password then the screen will show all the information okay what about his what about his job specification now we are saying it can be combined isn't it for higher positions so we say he manager general manager required for a refrigerator factory ha huh? the job involves planning all right then coordinating directing the efforts of the entire plant all right coordinating job of functional managers so that is the job all his description the next para can we not say the right man shall be a graduate in engineering preferably a post graduate from a reputed institute what are you doing you are giving the job specification right so do you think you can combine and write out for a higher positions job description and specification because you are seeing it all the time it's always there in the newspaper if you get a job and you join the hr department these are some of the work which will be given to you immediately no that you 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 write down and add draft draft for an advertisement okay so if it's a advertisement for a senior person you can combine both of this okay any questions all right so figure 5.3 and 5.4 gives a typical job description and a combined job description and job specification now unfortunately you may not be able to read these so i can read them out for you okay but you will find them also in your textbook all right here you see it says here job title senior officer in bracket direct materials or manufacturing or planning and sale okay so this is the description the title can be any of these senior managers range of job nasik this is a certain factory and certain department department direct materials manufacturing planning and sales okay reports to whom functionally to manager materials and administratively to manager materials also you know the difference between the two for instance function is a material function if he is a senior manager materials then his function is material so he'll report to another person senior to him whose function is also material because in his function he can give direction like say your department now okay in iit is mechanical engineering department all right but we also have a registrar so in a sense administratively you may be reporting to the registrar because in all matters pertaining to administration he is the number one but functionally whom will you report to your head of department of your department not of some other department not electrical or chemical because you are mechanical so that is what it means then immediate level subordinates first whom he reports to then who reports to him we call them direct reports so officer purchase and packing material and vendor development assistant officer direct materials planning assistant officer dispatch so if you draw organization chart isn't it you will show all these that you say senior manager senior manager materials smm and under him all right he reports to whom so this is senior officer this job position 
and he reports to we said reports to manager manager materials all right and under him you have got assistant officer ao direct materials so ao direct materials we have another person under him assistant officer dispatch so he is also ao but dispatch and then you have a third person under him and he is assistant storekeeper assistant storekeeper so this is the kind of below him and above him for this post okay then objectives of the job or summary of the position summary planning now is this a job description or is it a job specification this part is the description all right planning following of direct materials and purchase components planning and procurement of all packing materials price negotiations vendor development planning quantity of products and components to be produced as per production program and release of manufacturing orders inventory control of direct materials manufactured components and wip what is wip work in process that is half finished in the pipeline raw materials come maybe there are 5 6 7 7 operations to be done so it's not complete it is in the pipeline we call that work in process or work in progress wip control of critical items and of slow and non moving items which are the items in the stores which are fast moving it comes from the dispatch from the vendor is consumed by the factory quickly and then there are slow moving and there are non moving say one year two years have passed and these items have not been used at all okay so here to control that maintenance of all central excise records and rules the product they are producing are excisable products now for excisable products there are statutory requirements of the excise act that you have to maintain all these records otherwise you will be punished you can go to jail also so maintenance of that is his responsibility then transport planning and scheduling and dispatch of finished goods once it is assembled then it has to be sent to the various depots or to the client so that is his responsibility transport contracts negotiations and transport arrangements so with lorry contractors all right he has to call for tenders quotation that they make comparative statement negotiate with them all right and it doesn't say whether he has the power to sign the contract probably he doesn't have he negotiates and makes a recommendation to the manager that is his boss maybe manager has the power proper receipt storage and issue and packing of finished goods so in the warehouse he is also in charge of the warehouse not in a higgledy piggledy half hazard fashion steel lying here molded components lying in some other place polythene in some other place paper in some other he has to plan the warehouse properly store it because constantly a material going out going out where finished goods if it's in the store or outdoor yard is going to client or depot if it is raw material all right it is going out where for production. for production it is going out similarly you have materials coming in also again raw materials come in components come in finished goods come in finished goods means you are manufacturing a refrigerator factory say the finished goods will be a motor for a refrigerator that comes in its individual packing everything that has to be stored so all that is his responsibility any question on this okay very clear now you see it will be difficult for you to delineate and find out which part of this is his job description and which part is his job specification because we are showing an example of how you combine at a senior level principal duties and responsibilities manufacturing planning coordination with so and so these are 
the departments shortened form of name you know each company gives some short form of name and other personnel from vl range for sales program supplies production and dispatch of urgent items made at nashik translate sales requirements into manufactured components at various stages considering the scrap decide quantities and due months for manufacturing orders at various stages of production with due consideration for sales program and wip limits so this is a job which is a production planning and control job prepare and issue manufacturing of orders to shops ppc that is production planning and control ha huh? through the ppc or stores and predetermine quantity of material in them are you understanding anything i don't think you are understanding anything unless you have worked in any factory anyone worked here so these are the detailed processes you see we said to what detail you want to make it this pretty detail because he is not a very senior officer right so they are detailing it if you had gone to general manager level or vice president level it would not be so detailed it will be very broad which will envelop and encompass lot of items this is very detailed so this was manufacturing planning this is the materials planning okay materials which come in as raw materials and they go out into the manufacturing material planning is prepare short that is 4 to 6 months materials plan for abe must be some department including material call off schedules prepare critical items list on a monthly basis critical items may be those materials where there are limited vendors so you are at the mercy of the vendors maybe only two vendors or one vendor so they are critical to your production so you have to keep extra attention focused on that because if it doesn't come your production may stop of that line prepare monthly weekly quarterly data regarding material receipts stocks issued for nasik for ab provide data on long term basis 15 month material planning for imported materials used at nasik these were the days now imports are very easy but before the liberalization imports were very difficult and time consuming because you had to get license for everything so license means you have to get it from the government at delhi and in order to get the license few months would be taken after getting the license only you could place the order on the foreign supplier and the foreign supplier had his delivery lead time maybe one month or two months then it used to be shipped shipping time was there maybe another 15 days or 30 days and after it came another 15 20 days in the docks because that was a time consuming procedure okay to get it through customs duty clearance from the docks then ship to your factory so that's why it's 15 months this is this this is a kind of lead times you have to have for imported okay so and then it keeps on giving you see inventory control is various and the items on it then future plan that is you have to make a projection also sales plan monthly dispatch okay ensure proper maintenance then others apart from the subheading plan and execute periodic stock taking of the material because what is stock taking when materials come in and go out they physically come in and they physically go out but you keep a record in a register or in your computer records so stock taking means trying to reconcile if the records say there are 100 pieces you physically count them to see whether there are 100 or there are 99 or there are 102 say it says 100 and you find there zero what's wrong with that anything wrong do you get a alarm bell what might have happened it came but you didn't enter it then where did it go because if there's a someone who wants to do chori there you know if it is not entered that means it has not come if it has not come he could have thrown it over the factory fence and taken it away you see these are the implications so stock taking is very very important when you have it's like a auditing in fact auditor report will tell 
whether the company has done any stock taking or not. In large factories, you have what is called as perpetual stock taking, perpetual. Throughout the years, some department or the other, you are taking stock, it is on a rolling basis. Hmm? So, this is also his responsibility. My God, he has got a lot of responsibility. This chap should have been at least a manager. What else? Authority limits. You see, these are the kind of things you put into a job description. Decisions taken without prior reference to superiors. What are those? Buffer stock levels of individual items. You know what is buffer stock? extra material which you keep. Say you need every day 10 pieces, maybe you keep 14 pieces, because in case the supplier delays, you will not have a stock out. That means, the production won't stop. So, that is a buffer stock. Buffer stock levels is his, he can decide, because if you keep more and more stock, you are tying up more and more money, it is costly to the company. If you put too much less, then you may have a stock out, production stop means loss of money again. So, at his responsibility level, the buffer stock, they have said, it is your responsibility. Manufacturing order release in line with sales production program, flow of material and so on. These are his limits. He cannot go over that. Only recommendations made and decisions to be approved by superior. So, you are right. Most of this, he has to make recommendations. He does not have the right to sign on it. So, that was lower level. Now, let us see a higher level, director human resources, top level, maybe number 2 under M D, he is director human resources. What does that say? Our client is a large specialty chemicals corporation with a global presence. The organization has an impressive growth and profitability record. Its corporate mission is to become a key international player in its field. And it invites you to join the top management team to accomplish this challenging task. So, you see the preamble, they are trying to bring excitement that this is something challenging. You may be the person who will fit this. You would be responsible for so, what is it? Job specification or job description? Still, there is confusion, I find. Description, specification, confusion. <laughs> it is a job description because he is responsible, he does that job, all right. So, providing leadership, right, roles, leadership to a team of managers in training and development personnel and industrial relations. Okay. This is a typographical error, all right. Providing process and system inputs for enabling the company to achieve the goal of continuous performance improvement across the organization. See how broad it is, nothing specific like in the previous one. Influencing management style and culture for creating an environment of excellence in fostering a feeling of ownership among the employees, very broad. It is for him to decide how he brings this in. Huh? How do you bring it in? He is senior person, he is supposed to decide programs and policies in order for him to achieve this, that is his job influencing management style. How do you influence management style? Do you give a circular that here and after with immediate effect, people will wear ties and coat and come, so that management style is influencing? Or does he say that from now, every month we will have a departmental meeting, where all will participate, right from the director up to the peon, Bahadur will be there also. They will all, we will hire the hall auditorium of the company, we will sit and we will discuss any problems. I will tell you what are the future plans of the company, what is our role in it. Now, that is one way which he may decide to do, to bring in what? 
to bring in a informal participative job involvement culture no within the department so these things he has to think through so it's very broad his job description periodically reviewing and restructuring the organization as required by changing market scenario and business strategy that means since he is a director he has to be tuned to the business also if the market changes all right and the therefore the company has to reorient itself then so far as hr resources are concerned he has to be in step so he has to keep an eye on that as part of the top management team okay now success in this assignment requires requires what specification job specification isn't it total business perspective that means don't think you are only a personnel and industrial relations expert you are supposed to look yourself look at yourself as a general manager of the whole business total business perspective with specialization in personal function and organizational development you should possess a post graduate qualification in management with a proven track record of achievement in above areas so when you come for interview or apply you have to say contributions which i have done in my career i have built a new department all right i have won so many prizes for the company in terms of culture ha huh? all this he has to give what is his proven track record not what he can do but what he has done actually with supporting documents all right the position requires high degree of initiative tenacity and strategic influencing skills the preferred age is around 45 years old if you are confident of your abilities and enjoy challenge this could be the opportunity you are looking for otherwise don't apply that's the implicit message our client ranks among the best paying organizations in india ah uh, this is the carrot being given the position offers ample opportunities for career growth what does it mean that you won't retire as director of hr you may become md maybe deputy chairman maybe chairman there are enough prospects please send your detailed resume through speed post your identity okay any questions which party somebody advertising agency maybe if you have retained advertising agency but say you haven't retained say so your hr department is doing the recruiting themselves so you are hr executive you are asked look the post is vacant now the director hr has retired please make an advertisement you have to do like this so how will you do you'll do a web search isn't it get samples of others then put together with your knowledge now you don't have to go to hr department after taking this course you know something about it you can do it yourself and all this you need if you become an entrepreneur you set up your company can you pay can you afford to hire various people you and your partner whoever it is whatever you know about hr whatever you have learned from wherever that is all you have you have to make do with that small people cannot hire you know and pay the, those prices to consultants that's why these breadth courses are so important it gives you an appreciation doesn't make you an expert but if when you start a, your own on setup you're not going to require that kind of expert you know knowledge and skill for hr accounts you may have to hr you may have to hire if you got 25 20 more than 25 workmen they suddenly call one fellow comes and says sir we have formed a an union if you don't know anything okay you may take a part time expert you know in labor and industrial relations but general knowledge of this different functions of the business you need to know if you are going to become an entrepreneur even little bit of accounts ha huh? if you have an opportunity take a breadth course in accounts and finance purposes of job analysis so human resource planning recruitment and selection training and development job evaluation remuneration performance appraisal performance information safety health etc all of this think through it you'll find that job analysis 
is very very important for all these things. Methods of collecting data, see these are the nitty gritty the techniques what HRP will do, observation, interviews, questionnaire, checklist, technical conferences. That means, you have so many conferences which are held, HR conferences so many are held. The companies usually send their managers there, because then they get a exposure to the outside world, to the profession. What is happening outside is just like in our technical. We have conferences on mechanical engineering subjects. So, you attend conferences, you give papers, that is to broaden your knowledge and to keep it updated. You know what is happening the world over. Diary, what is the meaning of diary? As and when you go along, you keep making notes of important points that you come. Many successful managers they do that. Quantitative techniques for collecting data. Position analysis questionnaire, PAQ. This analyzes jobs in terms of employee activities. What are the activities they are doing? That is the basis for analysis. PAQ contains 194 job elements on which a job is created. Depending on the degree to which an element or that element is called descriptor is present. Figure 5.6 describes the six categories and gives the example of rating scales used to collect information and to rate the jobs. So, if you are you do not have to be a specialist in this, but if you did personnel postgraduate you know, then you have to be expert in this, how to do the job rating. So, look at this, there is a provision for each for rating each job on each job element, six types of rating scales are used as follows. Okay. Type of rating scale and this is letter identification and the letter identification is given here. You see, for instance, a specific, a specific rating scale is designated to be used with each job element. In particular, the scale considered most appropriate to the content of the elements all but A that is applicability scale are 6 point scale with 0 which is coded as N being used for does not apply as illustrated below. So, this is N is 0 does not apply 1 very minor 5 extreme this is the importance of the job and this is the rating. So, rating scale used in P A Q. Any questions? This is a simple rating scale. Type of rating scale is extent of use of that element. You know, you are analyzing the job. How many elements we said? 194 elements. You can you have the whole chart, and in the job that you are studying, someone is doing the job, say assembly job. You look at all this, all right, and you say extent of use. Is it 1? Is it 0? Maybe it is not applicable. Okay. So, this in conjunction with this makes a powerful tool PAQ they call it for doing a job rating exercise. All right. The main advantage of PAQ is that it can be used to analyze almost all jobs because it is very exhaustive. You can see any job you know for instance a job is to hold, to fasten, to pick, to place. Okay. So, all the basic elements they have tried to bring in. So, practically every job you can do a analysis and a rating with this. Provide a comparison of a specific job with other job classification, because that is needed to fix pay scales, a job in a plating shop, a job in the design office. They are so different, is not it? A workman in a electro plating shop and a design office but you have to have equivalence. Say a semi skilled worker in a plating shop, is he equivalent to a junior draftsman or a draftsman? How do you see that? By elements of job. Even a junior, even in the, in, in the drawing office, there are elements of the job, you know, which are common like reading drawings, is not that an element of job? Guidance, this is an element of job this is universal, it can be applied to any. So, that is why it says provides a comparison 
of a specific job with other job classification. Then management position description questionnaire, this was for workmen for management. This is a highly structured questionnaire containing 208 items relating to managerial responsibilities, restrictions, demands and other miscellaneous position characteristics. These 208 items are grouped under 13 categories shown in table 5.3 and what are these 13 categories? These are the 13 product, marketing and financial strategy planning, coordination of other organizational units and personnel. So, if you have to coordinate with other departments, obviously it is higher level, is it not, than if you are in only in your own department. Internal business control, if you are a profit center, you are controlling a business, although not MD. Product and services responsibility, public and customer relations, if you have to do internally and you have to do externally, there is an image of the company. So, there is a difficulty level in projecting a good image, so that is a higher rating. Autonomy of action, advanced consulting, autonomy means independence, have you got the decision making power given to you, approval of financial commitments, staff service, supervision, staff service means hiring, firing, these are, have you got the power to do that, supervision, complexity and stress, advanced financial responsibility, broad personnel responsibility. So, these are the descriptors here in this questionnaire, 13 which has grouped from 208. Then functional job analysis, function means marketing, production, okay, HR, these are functional. General management means all these put together is general management job. So, this is a worker oriented job analytical approach which attempts to describe the whole person on the job. The main features of FJ are a fundamental distinction must be made between what has been done and what employees need to do to get the things done. Looks like some sort of a riddle or you understand it. Huh? Fundamental distinction must be made between what has been done and what employees need to do to get things done. So, you have assembled this pencil, this is done, there is a difference between what is done and what the employee need to do to get this done. That means, he could not be color blind, if he cannot see green, he cannot do the job. He has to be able to distinguish between colors, okay. he should be able to see, he should have use of his fingers, if he is a disabled person and he does not have, then it may not be possible for him to do the job and so on. Then B, jobs are performed in relation to data, people and things. In relation to things, employee drawn physical resources. In relation to data, employee drawn mental resources. And in relation to people, employees draw on interpersonal resources. All jobs require employees to relate data, people and things to some degree. Accepted? Each of these elements you have to do in order to perform any job, maybe in varying degrees, but you have to do it. Although the behavior of employees and their tasks can be described in many ways, only a few definitive functions are involved. For example, while interacting with machines, Employees feed, tent, keep your machine clean, operate and stroke or set up. Set up means what? Putting the tools, okay, the die and taking it off when the job component changes. So, these are the few elements they do. Although each of the functions, although each of these functions occur over a large range of difficulty and content, are you setting up a complex tool or a simple tool? Each essentially draws on a relatively narrow and specific range of similar kinds and degrees of employee characteristics and qualifications. So, characteristics and qualification of the employee is from a really narrow band, even if you do a wide range of jobs, that is what it says. 
the levels of difficulty required in dealing with the data, the people and the things, all these three elements are hierarchical and can be represented by an ordinal scale. Table 5.4 shows the levels of difficulty for various jobs in regard to data, people and things. So, you see this job analysis, what is it trying to do? Ultimate aim is what? Ultimate aim, have you understood? There are many areas in which you can use this for hiring people, advertisements and so on, training, but ultimate aim is you must pay the right amount uh, for the right kind of jobs done by people with the right skills. So, you do not pay an engineer's salary to a assembly worker, that is why you need to analyze jobs. Now, when you put it that way, it sounds so simple, but in a complex organization, there are many types of jobs where the equivalence has to be found, factory job, sales job, service job, construction job, okay, office job, managerial job of different types. So, where the equivalence is, you have to have a common basis for analyzing the job. That is why job analysis is very important. Finally, for compensation, that is the many other things, but that is the main. So, the lower numbers associated will less see this table. This is the table. Levels of difficulty for worker function in FJ, synthesizing, so this is data, this is people and these are things, synthesizing, mentoring, setting up, coordinating, negotiating, precision working, analyzing, instructing, operating or controlling, compiling, supervising, driving or operating, computing, diverting, manipulating, copying, persuading, tending, comparing, speaking or signaling and feeding of bearing, serving, handling, taking instruction. So, these are the levels of difficulty, all right, in this order 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etcetera. After a job difficulty has been described, using the numerical scheme, the information can be compared to the job elements reported in the Dictionary of Occupation Titles, DOT, which is a standardized data source describing a wide range of jobs. From your particular job, you go to the reference and compare. Once the closest job in the DOT has been located, the accompanying job description can be modified as necessary to fit the specific job being analyzed. Okay. Unless you actually do it, you would not be able to fully visualize, but the idea is for you to get a exposure that there are scientific ways of doing the job analysis also okay, and can be done by expert. Now, now there are certain problems of course, with job analysis also which may come. So, support from top management is often missing. You know this, this is a very detailed and time, time consuming exercise, this coordinating with going from shop to shop, department to department and if the top management does not give support, then people brush you off, they brush you off, they do not take you seriously. You go and sit in the department and they will not give you the data that you want, people will not come forward. So, this is a potential problem unless top management uh, support is there. Often analysts rely only on one or two methods when a combination of more methods would be more beneficial. No training or motivation of job holders to participate honestly and cooperate with HR department in the job analysis exercise. You go to various department, this is their lowest priority job, they may not talk to you also. So, it becomes very difficult for HR people to actually on paper it looks very scientific etcetera, but garbage in garbage out, if you do not collect the data, you are unable to do it. So, what is will be the value of that job analysis? Very little, is not it? And it is very difficult to get the data. Everyone is busy in their department. 
So, unless the top management support is there, then people wake up and then they'll give you a cup of tea. They'll come, okay, what questions, what can we do for you and so on. No training or motivation, okay. Activities may be distorted by the job holders submitting wrong or inaccurate data to the analysts, either inadvertently or initially. You talk to people as part of your analysis to collect data and everyone thinks he is doing a very important job, he gives you wrong information. Sometimes you have to use your judgment to filter out some of the subjective things which are given. So, that was job analysis, then we have job design. Job design is next in the logical sequence after job analysis which provides job related data as well as the skills and knowledge expected to the incumbent. This is important, the job design involves conscious efforts to organize the tasks, duties and responsibilities into a unit of work. There are various jobs, the skill of designing a job composite is to bring the logical elements of the job together and have one person do that job, then you get the optimization. Or in other words, it integrates work content, tasks, functions and relationships, the rewards extrinsic and intrinsic and the quantifications required, qualifications required, skill, knowledge, abilities for each of these jobs in a way that meets the needs of the employees and the organization. Therefore, job design involves three steps, the specification of the individual tasks that is job related the specification of the methods to be used and the combination of the tasks into specific jobs. Okay. Steps 1 and 3 determine the content of the job, while step 2 that is specification of the methods used precisely indicates precisely how the job shall be performed. While designing the job requirements of the organization and the individual needs of the job holder must be considered, this balance is important. So, there is some employee who is going to do the job, is not it? His needs also should be looked at. So, factors affecting job design, organizational factors like characteristics of tasks, work practices, workflow and ergonomics, environmental factors like employee abilities and availability, social and cultural expectations and behavioral factors, feedback, autonomy, variety and use of ability. Okay. And last you have techniques of job design, work simplification is one, one of the techniques, division of work elements, repetitive work process, predetermining tools and fixtures and methods that is assembly sequence procedures, restricted interaction amongst the employees that is make workstations where people can have chit chat, few skill requirements, these skilling so that you have efficiency and work division. Then another is integrative job rotation, a given employee performs different jobs, but more or less, more or less jobs of the same nature. Job enlargement that is expanding the number of jobs and tasks or duties, adding more tasks and duties does not mean that new skills and abilities are needed to perform it, but the boring element you know the fatigue element is taken away, because you are enlarging a job is not only one or two elements. Then you have apart from enlargement, job enrichment. This seems to improve both the efficiency and the human satisfaction, if you enrich it. More autonomy and responsibility, that is enrichment, some elements. More variety of tasks, more growth opportunities and more planning and controlling with less supervision. And nowadays what has happened? This has been extended to work teams, that is self-empowered work teams number of individuals in a group who have all this autonomy and they can do it and you get very good efficiencies out of that. Autonomous or self directed teams, that is what I said, teams of an intact group. They solve day to day problems, make the job related day to day decisions themselves. So, in the ultimate nowadays the modern in the job design is to come to the autonomous self directed work teams. Okay. And high performance work design, same principle as autonomous working group, working in a fast changing industry environment where quick response and innovative working is essential. 
So, more and more industries as we go into the IT age and so on will adopt this high performance autonomous team working module and principle. And this is a comparison of various job design approaches. So, job design approach positive outcome, negative outcome. So, one ap approach is work simplification, job rotation, job enlargement, job enrichment, autonomous work team and high performance work design. Okay. And you have negative and positive like in everything there is a plus and a minus. Let us look at the number 6, high performance work design works in an environment of high rate of innovation and operational freedom, it is good, good job satisfaction. Negative is may not work in large bureaucratic organization and let us look at say job enrichment. Increasing motivation, reduce absenteeism, psychological needs of employees are met, brings about empowered teams and on the negative side, people may not like to accept new responsibilities. Yes, there are people who do not like that. Union resistance adds to the problem, union may not say that may not agree to this. Job enrichment if not accompanied by other job inputs will fail in its goal. Okay. Other job inputs means when you enrich the first thing union will want is more pay, because they are doing more jobs, enrich jobs and so on. So, those are the other inputs. So, now we come to the end of this topic that is job analysis and design. Do you have any broad questions? No? If not, I bid you a very good afternoon and we will meet again on Tuesday. Thank you very much.